shepherds on the hillside. They were angels in the sky. They said, boys, don't you be afraid. This is the night of your life. It's a baby. Christmas. Thank you for coming the Sunday after Christmas. I was kind of talking to God and saying, you know, God, we were here Christmas Eve. How about we just take the Sunday off? But no, it's good to be here, especially as we get ready to celebrate a new year. So I welcome you all to worship this morning. I'm Steve Melody, your pastor, and it is great to be with you. Uh, not a lot going on this week in the life of the church. So if you look at the announcements, you'll think there's not much happening here, but uh, that's okay. Uh, rest up because at the beginning of the year, we start up with a whole bunch of new uh, Christian formation studies, and we hope that you'll be a part of those on Sunday mornings. Uh, lots of new activities that are coming, so watch for all of those. It's good to be with you this morning. Uh, we get to celebrate this morning with the Eastside Interfaith Community Services Food Bank, and Matt is here. He'll talk to us a little bit more at the time of the offering um, as we dedicate all of the non-perishable food that you all brought uh, in through the reverse Advent bags. Uh, there are bags of food here under this Christmas tree. There's even uh, probably two to three times that in the sanctuary around the tree. 
Uh, and so it'll be great to dedicate that, and then uh, we'll get that over to the East Side Food Bank uh, this week so we can fill their shelves again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, for those donating financially to the church, remember um, all donations for 2019 need to get in today uh, so that they can get credited to your 2019 giving. And all of those giving statements will be ready for you uh, by the end of January for all your tax purposes. So uh, in order to qualify for all of that, your checks have to be dated in this year, and they've got to get into us today uh, at the latest for that. So uh, let's get ourselves ready for worship. I invite you to take a moment simply to be in prayer on your own to thank God that you made it through Christmas and to pray you make it into the new year. Let's take a moment just to be in prayer. Usually on a Sunday I come over here to the candles and I light a candle, but on the Sunday after Christmas, the candles are already lit. It's a reminder that the light is with us. It always has been. And we use these candles to light through the Advent Christmas season to talk about how that light grows from one light into many lights. We are now the light. God has placed within us the glory that God has placed within all of us. So we come this morning because the story's now our story. It's within us. And we need to go up to the mountaintops and shout it down into the valleys that Christ is born. God is with us. So let's rise and have some fun and tell it from the mountaintop. <laughs> That's some good background music. <laughs> you may be seated. Uh, let's pray together. Oh, Lord, thank you so, 
so much. For not just being the creator, but being the redeemer and the sustainer. For not just sitting back and watching what we would do, but for coming into our lives in this person of Jesus. And to not just be the way, but to show us the way. It humbles us to think that you would walk among us, even as one of us, to, to teach us how to live and how to love, to, to forgive us all the mistakes that we make, especially the ones that we repeat, to overcome the power of sin in a way that we never could on our own. It really does boggle our mind, God, that you would do this. But you did. And so we thank you in this Christmas season for being born into this world and, and walking with us in every part of our lives. Help us as we end this year and begin a new one, God, to honor and praise you so that our living is about your loving, so that we can learn to forgive others even as you have forgiven us, and we can be the faithful people that you created us to be. Here we are. Use even us. Amen. Could I have all the kids come on up with me? Parents, if you have a little one that's a little shy, come on up with them. I take kids of all ages. Come on up. Morning, Johnny. Hi, how are you? Come on, we're going to come up here. So before I get to the children's message, we have a special day here at church. It's somebody's birthday tomorrow. Do you know who that is? Hi, Max. It's Pastor Steve's. His birthday's coming up tomorrow. So can we all join in and sing happy birthday? <laughs> another year just another year so Christmas is done and the new year's coming it's almost 2020 <gasps> how crazy yeah <gasps> wow well this is the time of year that we look back at last year and we think about next year and how are we going to make it a better year so I have some suggestions for you I want you to Lie and cheat and do a little drinking and a little swearing and a little stealing. Do those sound like good New Year's resolutions? <gasps> Stealing is not good. Well, let me explain a little bit more. So I want you to lie around and enjoy God's creation. We get so busy we forget to smell the flowers and look at the sunsets. So lie around a little bit and enjoy it. No, there's snow in the mountains. Maybe you can go see it, huh? I want you to cheat. I want you to cheat failure. Okay? Try something new. It's okay to fail. Because guess what? That's when we usually learn something important. So 
cheap failure and go out and try something new that you've always wanted to try. And then I want you to drink in the knowledge of those around you. Look at all these people out here. God puts these people in our lives. Guess what? They're older than most of you. They've been around a while. They've learned a few things. So when you're having a hard time, you can talk to one of the adults, and they can help you. So that's a good way to figure things out. And I want you to swear, not that kind of swearing, I see that grin, to do your best in everything you do. Because guess what, Max? That's how you're going to have a good year. If you always put your best foot forward and try your best. And the last one, I want you to do a little stealing this year. Steal some time to be with God every single day. Whether it's those first moments when you open your eyes in the morning and you say, good morning, God, thank you for this wonderful day. Or if it's the very last minute of the day as you're going to bed and you say, thank you, God, for this wonderful day. Or any time in between. Take a little time, steal it away to be with God. And I guarantee if you do these things, you're going to have a wonderful new year. Let's say a prayer. Say a prayer. Dear God, ah, a brand new year lays before us. How exciting. Help us to do our very best this year, to spend more time with you, to share your love with others, and help make this world a better place. Amen. Thank you. You guys can all go back to your beds. Okay. We, uh, we have the honor and privilege in the Tucson community of partnering with the Interfaith Community Services. They have two main offices, one on the west side and one here on the east side. Um, and every year for the last several years, we've participated in what's known as the reverse Advent bag uh, celebration. So, you know, in your Advent calendars, each day you get some sort of candy or a, a, a piece of a Lego that puts together in a set or whatever. A reverse Advent bag is one where each day you donate a non-perishable food item. And then we donate it to the Eastside Interfaith Community Services Food Bank. And so Matt is here to tell us a little bit more about Interfaith Community Services and how this food is of help to them. So let's welcome Matt. <laughs> yes. Um, I'd like to start off with just a true heartfelt thank you. I don't know if you guys understand how far this food goes. It took me until being back here a second time to realize that now that I've been a full year through uh, at the food bank. Um, but this is by far our largest dry goods donation that we get. We pick up fresh food from grocery stores and produce that's right at the end of its life, but when it comes to keeping cans on the shelf, it's truly this congregation that helps keep us stocked with all of the canned goods and box goods and all of that kind of stuff. And I know I talked about this last year, and I already did some peeking through the bags, but you guys go above and beyond um, just those staple items that some people just look right past, and you get things that when I have clients come in, it lights them up. They get to pick items that they know their family truly will cherish, things that they will like, that they will enjoy, not just food that will sustain them, but food that will make their family happy. Um, and it is, it is truly amazing just to be back here again and see this, and I can't wait till this week when we come pick it up and get it all on the scale and get to see that total number. I know last year we were just shy of 3,000 pounds just from this donation alone. Um, yeah, no, that's something to clap about. Uh, but just a little background then, this goes to help uh, roughly 300 families a month. We have come by our Eastside Food Bank. Uh, the numbers are always in an ebb and flow, so 300 is about as accurate as I can get. Um, even during the holiday times, I think this month was about 350, but it's, it's truly on this side of town, 
there is a need that often is not met, and this congregation truly helps to step up and fill that need. And again, I thank you all so much. So standing amidst all of this food, this must be it, the sugar wafers. That's what makes all the families happy, right? <laughs> um, I just, I'm constantly humbled at a Christmas season when we're all busy buying for each other. Uh, the gifts of love tree, uh, all of those gifts went out and provided families uh, for their Christmas and all of this food that will restock the shelves at the end of the year. I'm really, really grateful. During this time of offering, sign in on those red guest books that are somewhere on your table, especially if you're new and you'd like more information about our church. Uh, make sure we get your information then we can get that to you. Let's pray and bless all of this food. Gracious and holy God, hey, thank you, God, for allowing us to be a part of what you're doing, for giving us the ability to be able to be generous, for calling us into the kind of ministry that would challenge us to, to take care of others not just ourselves. May this food bring peace and joy and happiness. May it fill stomachs and strengthen bodies and restore hope in homes. May those who eat of it, whom we probably will never meet, have a sense of your presence, of your sustaining presence in all this food. And may all our giving to this church be in your name and to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. to read to you a story today uh, from one of my favorite storybooks, A Rare Nativity. And then I want to tell you why I want to read this story to you today. Um, on the screen you'll see pictures from the book. They're, <coughs> I think, really quite interesting. On the first night of Christmas, I gave my enemy a briar from a tanglewood tree. And on the second night of Christmas, I gave my enemy two broken eggs. On the third night of Christmas, I gave my enemy three crooked forks. On the fourth night of Christmas, 
I gave my enemy four old potatoes. On the fifth night of Christmas, I gave my enemy five shards of glass. And on the sixth night of Christmas, I gave my enemy six crumpled tissues. On the seventh night of Christmas, I gave my enemy seven scraps of paper. On the eighth night of Christmas, I gave my enemy eight clumps of clay. On the ninth night of Christmas, I gave my enemy nine rusty nails. And on the tenth night of Christmas, I gave my enemy a bird's nest in ten pieces. On the eleventh night of Christmas, I gave my enemy eleven dead leaves. On the twelfth night of Christmas, I gave my enemy twelve gnarly twigs. That night that followed twelve, I slept till half past three and wallowed in my sallow state against my enemy. I dreamed my enemy, my enemy convulsed. I dreamed he gagged and swore. My dreams were dashed as I awoke to knocking at the door. I grumbled out of bed, and then I shuffled toward the sound. I opened up the door to find a gift upon the ground. The tag upon the lid contained a note addressed to me. I recognized the penmanship. It was my enemy. I gently pulled the knotted twine, and setting it aside, I lifted up the lid to the compendium inside. Five shards of glass composed a star, a singular display. And sheep were made of tissue, bits of bird nest made the hay. Potato shepherds came to life with carvings and with clay as paper angels shouted out their wonders and their praise. Three kingly forks each bowed ahead near rusted spiky pegs. The briar baby lay between the pale parental eggs. All foolish things, all rotten things I had sent my enemy were carefully converted in this rare nativity. He turned the other cheek and made my ugliness a gem and by so doing pointed me to lovely Bethlehem. A lot of us have been hurt by people in our lives. We come to the end of the year and we, we look back at the year and we talk about the successes and the good points and we look at the challenges we've been through and the ways that people have hurt us. And we hope that somehow in the midst of it, the balance is in the favor of the goodness of life, but that's not always the case. Most of us like little kids, and if you watch little kids play with each other, you see they'll react in one of two ways. When um, this one hurts or hits this one, this one will either yell, Mom, he hit me! Right? In order to get him in trouble. Or this one will do what? Hit him back. Right? Luckily, kids know how to forgive much easier than adults. I sometimes think that the worst thing God invented was puberty. 
because once you hit puberty, you forget to forgive. And growing into adulthood, we carry so much baggage in our lives. Especially against those who have somehow hurt us. We spend a lot of our time then trying to hurt them back in some way. Which is what the rare nativity author had done in his own life, which is why he wrote this book. Because he discovered at one point in his life the enemy that he was trying to hurt back. Not only forgave himself, this one, but asked for forgiveness. And had turned all of those evil, awful parts of life into something that was really good. Something really, really good. Just a few days ago, we celebrated the birth of God into the world. And I can't help but think of all the, the joys and the hopes that Mary and Joseph had for him, that the shepherds had for him, that the wise men had for him, that the other townsfolk had for him, that the friends that he grew up with had for him, that the disciples who started following him had for him. That had to be sometimes dashed when they were run out of town, when he was beaten all night long, betrayed, denied by his own people, and horribly crucified. And at the very moment that God could have been justified to get back at the enemy who did this, within the third day, God had raised Jesus from the dead. He emerged from the tomb with grace and forgiveness. See, folks, as you end the year and begin a new one, you have got to find a way to put all of that evilness and all of that hatred and all of that anger and all of that need for revenge behind you. Because if you are going to give yourself to God through this Christ, then that's what we're called to do. In John 14, it tells us that we are to forgive just as we have been forgiven. It's not enough for us to proclaim that we're forgiven and not offer it to somebody else. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says, I tell you, if somebody hits you on one cheek, turn the other. Now here I want you to know that Jesus was never a doormat and he never asks us to simply take it over and over again for others. And I'll tell you that as I remind you of what I believe about Matthew chapter 6 when Jesus said, the other, turn the other cheek, to remind you that we have two sets of them. And if somebody's hurting you, sometimes you have got to get out in order to get away. But at some point along the way, you have got to forgive. Or what will happen is that you will become like this author. You will become the perpetrator of evil. You will become the one you hate. And that need for revenge will take over your life and will sour the celebration of the birth of Christ. And not just in your life, but in the life of your dog when you get home. In the life of the person in front of you who doesn't step on the gas pedal fast enough when the light turns green. Who takes their time walking across the crosswalk. Who actually does the speed limit on the freeway? That wasn't a question. Because God has come into this world to transform us into the beings in which God made us to be. 
loving, caring, kind, righteous, justice-oriented people. And forgiving people does not mean simply letting them off the hook. We have a legal system that takes care of that. And sometimes you have to follow through in the legal system in order to stop a bully. Jesus never asks us to be a doormat. But he also calls us to not return evil for evil. And when you forgive, you unwrap the feelings that are around your heart that are beginning to harden your heart. And you open up your heart again to love and to life. As you move into a new year and you make your resolutions for this new year, and the number one uh, resolution is to what? Come on, be honest. Lose weight, right? Let the weight of revenge be the first weight you let go of. And see, the challenge for us is, in the scriptures, Jesus reminds us in John's gospel that revenge is mine, saith the Lord. And what is God's revenge on the evil of the world? Now that's a question. What is God's revenge on evil in the world? What do you think? Robin encouraged you to go ahead and be brave about your mistakes, so say it. What do you think? Forgiveness. It's the greatest revenge there ever could be on evil. Because when you forgive in evil, evil no longer has power. And that's what evil wants, is power over your life. So when you participate in revenge, you just keep feeding the evil. And your heart, be your heart becomes hardened and unfaithful. If you want to experience love, you're going to have to forgive your enemy while still holding your enemy accountable through the system. You can forgive them and open your life to love again. And that's where we start at the manger. And that's where we see it completed in an empty tomb. Happy New Year. Oh, you people of faith. It's not easy. Forgiveness will transform your life. Not just when somebody forgives you, but when you forgive somebody else. Amen? We come to a time of prayer with each other. Lots going on in our lives. I'm not asking you to tell me all the weight of revenge that you need to let go of. Uh, but I'm inviting you during this prayer. Um, I'll go silent. And I, I'm, I'm inviting you to simply ask God to take it from you. And fill your heart with forgiveness. And in part of it, we also need to pray for Pam Raines, who's um, going to have some surgery tomorrow to have a thyroid removed. I told her before worship to tell the doctor to wrap it up and give it to me for my birthday tomorrow. Um, but Pam, our prayers will be with you tonight as you anticipate all of that, um, and during surgery tomorrow, and for you, Larry, as you wait outside. Uh, it's a hard thing to do, too. So our prayers are with you tomorrow. All will be well. Let's pray. Gracious God, the nativity is rare. It's just we've 
we've grown accustomed to it, associated so many other things with it that we sometimes forget the power of Jesus' birth. To change the world, to change our lives, to change all life. Lord, we're all carrying some burdens somewhere in our lives. Somebody has hurt us. And, and parts of our hearts are hardened. And Lord our God, if each of us as people of faith were to be truly honest with you, we'd have to tell you that Sometimes it feels like you're the one who hurt us. Sometimes it's hard to find your presence. Things that happen to us in the world are overwhelming and disappointing. And it seems like you don't do anything about it. But Christmas reminds us that you do. Where we see endings, you show us beginnings. Where we experience death, you give us life. And you certainly may not always help us out of things, but through our faith, and your presence in this Jesus, we know that you help us through things. So here we are, God, at the end of the year and the beginning of a new one. Looking for 2020 vision, clarity on how to live more faithfully. So we're going to be brave. We're going to give to you all those things that have hurt us and hardened our hearts. Listen as within us we share them with you, God. And do what you always do. Wrap them in your forgiving grace, even as you wrap us, so that now our hearts can be even more open to receive you and your love and to share that in the coming year. Tonight and tomorrow, may Pam be keenly aware of your presence around her. May the doctors and nurses' hands be guided. That she awakes well and finds a new year of great health. We ask that for all of us in the room, for all of us who gather online, for our friends and for our family, and even, Lord, we dare to ask it for our enemies. That somehow your grace will soften us all and lead us into a new year of peace. This we ask in Jesus' name. The baby who grew up and taught us to love you by loving others. And by praying together his great prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's rise and sing our praise. Angels we have heard on high Sweetly singing o'er the plains And the mountains in reply Echoing their joyous strains Gloria In excelsis Jesus, through the way you love, through the way you live, through your forgiveness, and through your forgiving. Amen. Come to Bethlehem and see him whose birth the angels sing. Come adore on bended knee. Christ the Lord, the newborn King, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. New Year. Jeremiah was a prophet. Was a, was a prophet too. And told us that the Son of God would come to earth to bring joy to me.
Joy to you and me. Joy to you and me.